Hey everyone, this is Claire Lebeau from NASAP, the North America Scholastic Esports Federation. Super excited at the lineup that we have here today because if you are thinking collegiate esports, this is your group right here. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let each person introduce yourselves. Um, let's go ahead and start with Michael. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm the executive director for the National Association of Collegiate Esports. For short, we just call it NACE. That's what everyone else does. Um, my, uh, I've got a number of responsibilities, but for the most part, we want to see collegiate esports um, formalized. We want to see opportunities at the collegiate level across both the United States and Canada. And we put in a ton of effort with our, our member institutions uh, to create those opportunities. And I'm ecstatic to be here with some of the best and brightest in our, our association here to share about themselves. Awesome. So you said you want to see it formalized. So let's just clarify because boy, you have a lot of members so we know it's formalized in a lot of schools. How many, how many schools are in NACE right now? So right now in terms of full NACE members, we're at what, 212, I think uh, if, as of yesterday. So I actually saw one come in today. So that must be these 213, uh, which is fantastic. Right. Awesome. To put it in perspective, in 2016, July of 2016, there were only six colleges and universities in the United States that had varsity level esport programs. Um, so that that's absolutely outstanding growth. Uh, you know, the running joke is the speed of higher education, which is to say it it doesn't move very fast. Esports is at this point the exception. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, it is moving incredibly quickly. Schools are adopting esport programs left and right. Even better than that, the esport programs that we've seen that schools typically start uh, or have started in the past are growing or much, much larger, right? It's not just like, here's a team. It's now here's an entire program that focuses around not just competition anymore. Uh, it's still a core uh, area, of course. But now looking at academic pursuits, looking at uh, community engagement, fundraising, right? Everything that we see athletics today um, and, and more, we're seeing ex schools experiment with when it comes to their esport programs. Right. That's awesome. So speaking of thriving esport programs, we have three leaders of just fantastic programs. So um, great to have you all. Let's see, Adam, why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about your school and your program? Yeah, my name is Adam Antor, um, and I am the director of esports at Florida Southern College. Um, prior to being at Florida Southern, I started about a month ago. I was at Aquinas College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I was the head esports coach. Um, and what's interesting to note about our program here at Florida Southern is I actually report to two different people on campus. I report directly to the athletic director from a competition standpoint, but I also report to the dean of students when it comes to student engagement on campus. And both are uh, very pivotal parts of my role here at Florida Southern. Hmm. That's awesome. That's an that's an interesting and really smart split. It sounds like to me. That's yeah. we have a lot of that going on in NASEF at the high school level too. You may be part of athletics, but definitely part of the instruction, the curriculum, super important. Um, Danielle, how about you? All right, um, I'm Danielle Sarikas. I am the head coach of esports at Lawrence Tech. Um, we have a brand new program. I'm also like Adam, where I report to student affairs and athletics. So. Um, I'm kind of in more of a sweet spot as well. I think I pivot more on the student affairs side, but we definitely are a uh, part of it. Um, and we grew from zero to 41 currently is our roster. And I am competing in about eight titles, which, you know, I wish, yeah, Doc, I'm, I'm a little bit crazy, but uh, okay. I like to be an overachiever and <laughs> hit a home run when I go. So That's awesome. Adam, how many, how many titles do you guys um, we compete on a varsity level in League of Legends, Overwatch, and Rocket League, so only three. Uh, but okay. we also support some club level competition for uh, Hearthstone and CSGO, um, and, and that's more student driven. So, gotcha. Cool. All right, Doc, take it away. Uh, excellent. Um, like my colleagues, we support a bunch of students. We've got five varsity games, what Adam said, plus uh, Madden and Valorant. <laughs> And uh, and then about 200 students in the on the club side, we support another handful of games. Some of them are the same. Some of them are different. R6 and and uh, Call of Duty and some of the other ones that the students want to play will support them uh, as well. But we have about 30 varsity student athletes um, 
who are both players and we have them on the production side. I mean, I'm sitting in front of our production desk right <laughs> here and um is he just light. showing off now? I'm pretty sure oh, he's just a light. Off. Well, all right. This is a, yeah, that's the doc special <laughs> that's right the there. <laughs> Not hard to beat You're my welcome. home office right <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you, Michael. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, describe a little bit about what the students are doing. You're, you showed us that awesome facility. Like, describe what production is. Wow. Um, so we produce about 40 hours of live uh, esports content a week. Uh, we have a team of about 15 uh, production and on-camera talent. Um, we produce all of our own uh, things. We uh, volunteer and produce high school events, and we also do some paid um, production. So it really is a, a working television studio with an esports team on the side, um, essentially is the way that it works. That's yeah. awesome. So if I'm a if I'm a parent and my kid mm -hmm. is totally into esports, Something that just something that at NACEF we look at a lot is parents are going like, I don't know, like, I get that you love this, but is there a future? Can you really go to school? Can you know, what are you going to do after you graduate? How are you going to make money? How are you going to take care of me? My old, you know, all those questions. So what do you think is the path for kids if they're in high school right now and they're thinking esports in college? Um, what's the path for them? Uh, let's see, Danielle, I'll start with you. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, so uh, it's actually kind of funny because I'm pretty new to the, the environment. I say new, but I've almost been here just about a year. Um, and for us, I think on this call, except Adam, Adam, that way, <laughs> uh, I, I would presume that most of our like degrees in college education didn't really pertain in, to esports. Um, and I know you didn't go to college for that, Adam. I'm saying experience-wise. So uh, I think gone are the days that that's going to be a thing. Um, and you're going to have more people looking for students who have uh, volunteered with programs like Doc or Adam. So and I'm striving to get to Doc's level. I think we all are, even the chat. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. um, education-wise, I think uh, just... Uh, we need a lot of graphic design people. Uh, we just partnered LTU with uh, production college, uh, Specs Howard, and I had been speaking to them about that uh, and starting to pull in people for shoutcasting. And obviously I had to say, oh, it's just like broadcasting. They just call it a fancy name. Um, so hopefully things like that, production schools will start, you know, funneling into esports, and that'll be uh, a good fit too. Mm -hmm. So we at NACEF, we talk a lot about what we describe as the esports ecosystem, which is all the jobs around the player. So for us, we see esports as a fantastic magnet to get kids involved and really caring about something at school. Like how great is it to be able to be learning around something that you are super passionate about, right? And there are tons of job opportunities in esports that may or may not include you being a professional gamer. So Doc just mentioned broadcast. Danielle, you just mentioned graphic design. What are the kind of opportunities do you see long-term for kids um, in or connected to the esports world? How about Adam? I, whatever you can imagine uh, is kind of the short answer. <laughs> um, I've had students with a variety of different school uh, skills and passions find a way into the space. Um, we have a student who's going to start writing our weekly recaps. Um, uh, he has, a, I don't know if he's super interested in sports writing or writing in general, but um, writing about esports has been something he, he's going to be doing for us. Um, we have students who are in leadership positions as captains. Um, we have students who are running broadcasts like a doc has. We have students who are doing broad play-by-play uh, -play like doc uh, has mentioned. Um, we have students who come in and take photos for our program. Um, and these are all variety of skills that prior to two years ago, you would have classified them as job opportunities, whereas esports wasn't. And now we're all just kind of realizing that there is actually a lot more crossover and potential um, uh, than we all originally thought. Um, I did not think I was going into esports. I was a marketing director at a high school uh, four years ago, saw a kid wearing an esports jersey and wanted to start a club. 
Um, and, and we did. Um, and now I'm working full time as an esports coach. And a couple of those high school students are now getting scholarships to go to college to play esports. So um, how the world has changed. And I think most of most of us have seen that uh, graphic with all the things I if you've got a passion and esports is also a passion of yours, there's probably an opportunity um, in the space for you. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at this group right here, right? All coaches, but no, none of us is, I don't know, is anyone on this call playing for a living? Oh, no. I'm, no, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing for a living. <laughs> right. I is, hate is, games. is that how you're, is that how you're supporting Claire, your family, Doc? I know this well because we've known each other for a bit, but this is the greatest scam I've ever perpetrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a head coach of video games um, and they believe it, they, they buy it. Uh, in in yeah. fairness to our colleagues, um, this is, this is the hardest work I think each of us have ever done. It's the most mm -hmm. dedicated. It's the most time we've ever put in. But there is there are very few moments where it feels like real work. Um, it is an opportunity to be with uh, students and watch them discover and become. Um, you know, it it really is like watching, um, you know, a a garden grow rapidly right in front of you. Um, you're amazed and delighted. And it's one of the few things professionally, I think, that allows you to feel real joy. I and mean, we all have happiness and success, but, but joy is like a selfless um, uh, expression. And we get that in this space. Um, uh, and we get to discover it all the time. It's, it's not that it's not hard. It's very hard. Um, but but it is a, it's, it's a beautiful space. And we're seeing students become the next version of themselves because they they got opportunities to have what we describe as consequential participation. The thing that they are doing is not an assignment that fits in a grade book. It is something that matters to them and to their community. And they have an opportunity to serve others through preparing for competition, for um, picking their, you know, their teammates up after a bad loss, um, feeling proud of their association with their universities and their schools, it's a, it's, it really is a special opportunity to plug these communities in where there really hasn't been that depth of community before. Right. Yeah. We see all the time kids who like, they come to a NACEF club and they, they're like, I found my people. I have been looking for this. I found my people on my campus, which they may have connected with their people before online, but to find your people on your campus and then be able to do things that you care about and learn and at the same time we all know as adults that camaraderie and the collaboration that they learn and all of those things like it's so important for kids to be able to find that in high school and then to continue developing that through college is awesome um, i heard the magic word scholarships earlier and i think that is something that you know as a parent with a college student i can tell you my ears perk up when i hear the word scholarship so tell us a little bit about what's available out there. Michael, how about if you tackle that one? What do you what do you see available through NACE and along the lines of scholarships? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, I would still like finding your people. Absolutely. I'm waiting for them to let me in. Um, <laughs> so I <laughs> just want to point that out. I, you know, some of us, I, th I know where they are. They'll let me in one day. Uh, but yes, scholarships, I mean, the largest pool, let, let's be, be very um, frank here, the largest pool of scholarships, it, it's institutional scholarships, right? So I, I know there's this big, um, I would say to, um, uh, to a point, it's a misconception that, you know, via esports, video games, you can go and win a lot of money. And sometimes that's in the form of scholarship pools. Yes, that does exist. But let's talk scale, right? The combined total of prize winnings uh, in terms of scholarship prize pools, it's, it's less than a million a year, maybe, right, uh, here in the United States. But if we look at the aggregate pool of scholarships, of tuition support that institutions who are fielding esport programs have, uh, I, we're, we're talking in the tens of millions at this point. I mean, it, it's dramatically different. So when... When we talk about esports and scholarships, I, I always point out that the best and greatest support you're going to get is from the institutions. So, what's your academic strength? 
what majors are you interested in? Matching that up with your player skill to institutions who are interested in students like you, that is the best utilization of your time that I can think of if I was a parent or a student, right? Obviously the parents supporting the student, trying to point them in the right direction. Um, because we, we talk about uh, earlier, I, I didn't mention because I didn't want to interrupt because these people are incredibly smart and I, I want to hear what they have to say. Uh, but, you know, we talk about uh, career opportunities and esports and all that. But, but remember, you can go after any major and still be, you know, a, a student with any any esports program, I mean, just like any other sport, right? Um, very few people go, hey, you play basketball, so what are you going to do as a job with basketball? Uh, you know, most student athletes would go, no, I'm in computer sciences, I'm in accounting, I'm in journalism. I just also happen to play intercollegiate, you know, insert activity. Um, esports is no different. I, I, there are there are a ton of, of job opportunities being created by esports, but I don't want to under you know to, to miss that people are complex. They're allowed to have many interests and pursue many interests. Yeah. Uh, your academic and your competitive interests don't have to overline. That's perfect oh, overlap. Sorry, uh, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, be successful in both. Dedicate yourself to your fullest potential in any pursuit you do. Uh, esports is just a vehicle that um, can help you get there and help give you other great skill sets that make you uh, a great leader in your community, a great employee in the future, right? Um, there are many companies who specifically target and want to hire as their employees former student athletes. And that's not because of the academic things they learn within sports. It's because of the skill sets, the, the character building that that comes with on top of the academic tool belt they come with having graduated with a full degree. Right, that's absolutely true. And I know at NACEF we have um, partnered with University of California, Irvine for a lot of research into, you know, how are kids learning when they're in these NACEF programs? And a lot of what they're learning is the STEM skills, the soft skills of communication and collaboration and understanding, you know, how to identify a problem and solve it and that kind of thing. And that's super important. And that's not something that you take a class for, right? Just like you said, you may not, you may not major in esports, you may end up working in that industry, you may just love it and end up doing something tangentially related. It's all good. What we're looking for is a place where a student can be themselves and do what they love and learn a ton and have a job they love at the end of all of it. You know, I mean, the last thing you want, I, we all love our jobs, right? The last thing you want is somebody who gets up in the morning and like, oh my gosh, I have to go to work today. So if we can help kids develop the skills and work in something that they're passionate about, I think that's awesome. Um, so speaking of skills, what kind of skills are you all looking for when you're um, bringing someone onto one of your competitive teams? Daniel, what did you say? You have 11? You're crazy. <laughs> no, not that many. Don't give me that many. Uh, eight. Well, do eight. You know, okay. Like, so I have Madden. Uh, Madden kind of self-sufficient. Uh, I don't want to say it that way, but that is kind of afterthought. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's even All worse, right. Danielle, to say it that way. <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't mean it it's, that it's way. A smaller, it's a smaller team, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're more able to self-organize. So, I, well, I have two Madden players. One was going to play uh, League, uh, and he actually is a multi-sport athlete. So he's on the lacrosse team, and Madden was uh, easier to balance for him than League was going to be. Um, and then the other player is also on the hockey team, which is also easier for him to balance. So it wasn't that it was an afterthought in that I wasn't. It's just uh, they were really excited and interested in competing. And I wasn't I didn't really want to turn a student away. I mean, I didn't get this opportunity. So I want to my demise and and give everybody the opportunity to to participate. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to I'm going to point out two things that you just said that I think debunk a lot of myths that parents have about esports because you said these kids are also playing sports, right? Mm -hmm. Lacrosse and hockey and that they're learning balance. And I think one of the myths that we hear all the time is about, oh, my kid is always playing games or these kids are always in the basement, right? They're always in a basement somewhere playing games. That is not true. And you can be a multi-sport athlete, and one of them include video games, and still do physical activity, and still balance your life, and be 
you know, doing well academically, that's all super important. And um, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of it, you know, a lot of times parents kind of go, oh, I'm not sure if I want them in there because I'm afraid my kids are going to be addicted to gaming. That That is the furthest thing, trust me, from any of our minds if your kids get involved in esports. We want them to be well balanced. Um, okay, rant over. <laughs> so what kind of skills are you looking for in kids? <laughs> uh, I, I'll go. I mean, I'm... Yep obviously looking for somebody who can balance life that's and it's going to take it serious uh i think you like you said a common misconception is that they're just playing video games in their parents basement and i really want somebody to represent uh you know esports and and lift it up and be a voice uh it's really important to have really good academics i mean most of us higher education you you need to be here for that reason. Um, so to be driven, that's that's really important. Awesome, Adam. How about you? What are you looking for? Um, I think the balance thing is great. Academics is definitely an important piece of it. Um, for me, a lot. Uh, one of the most important things I look for early on in the recruitment process is um, attitude um, and how they uphold themselves. <laughs> Um, in difficult situations. So usually when I first start talking to a recruit, one of my first steps is to get them playing with some of our players and just run some games, talk about the school, um, get to know each other a little bit. And I go back to my players and ask them, hey, what was it like playing with this person? What happened when you guys lost? What was their reaction? Um, because the worst thing that I could do to our program and what I'm trying to build is bring in somebody who um, gets down on their teammates or really struggles with losing, doesn't know how to do that. Um, so those are, those are some of the early things I'm looking for. Um, I also, I'm not very hands off on with my recruiting. Um, I know there's a lot of recruits out there, uh, or coaches who will constantly hit up their recruits and say, Hey, are you, have you applied this week? Have you applied this week? Um, and constantly doing that. Um, and I don't, I purposefully don't because I, I want players who are self-driven um, and who are responsible enough to go through that process without me constantly begging them. Because if I beg them now to apply, I'll beg them next year to do their homework or go study. Um, so th those are kind of the small things. Um, and the balance is so important. I, Nick's right behind me. Uh, he walked on this year to esports and the cross country team. Um, he's a freshman and he's working right, he's doing homework right now. So uh, balance is a very important part of, of uh, collegiate athletics in general, um, being able to balance it. Uh, so those are kind of the things I look for. Most of mine are soft skills because I've, I've learned over the years of coaching both at the high school and college level, I can teach a lot of the hard skills when it comes to most of these games, at least to a semi-competitive level. Um, but the soft skills take years to develop. So um, that's more what I focus on. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah. Doc, how about you? Anything specific that you're looking for in uh, recruits coming to your program? Grades. Truly. I mean, one of the things that really can help us understand the level of success that they can have in the college scene is it, even if there was a blip where things didn't go great, can you buckle down? And can you make the academic part work? That is a critical skill that you have to master. And when things get hard, which they always do in college, you get sick, you have a roommate issues, um, you overschedule, you oversleep, all of those things. Can you reset and, and get restarted? And grades tell us a lot. Um, a lot of you know recruits ask, well, what can I do to, to be ready to play in college. And it really is, well, if you've got a B average now, see if you can make it a B plus average, right? See what you can do different in that in that realm because we can offer them so much more in scholarship if their grades are a little bit higher and it's a better indicator of how they're gonna balance as my colleagues talked about um, what's going on in, in the difficult, you know, competitive space, traveling back and forth, trying to make it all work. Um, if they've got that experience. So grades are really important to us. Awesome. Um, so you just mentioned one thing, kids ask for advice and say, what do I do? And you said, if you have a B, strive to get a B plus. What else? NASEF has a ton of 
high school students that are going to watch this. I'm just realizing it's noon on the West Coast. So hopefully they're all in class right now. But of course, this will be available on Facebook later. And uh, we'll make sure that a lot of students see this. So students who want to go to one of the colleges where you all are coaching, um, in addition to grades, what else do you recommend they do while they're in high school to increase their odds of playing for a program at one of your schools? Play with teams. Um, get yourself on a team, uh, whether it's like you know an, an esports tower or one of these uh, developmental organizations that you know behaves like the AAU in basketball or any one of baseball or football. I mean, any of the the kind of the, the ladders for competitive experience. Have that experience. Um, we don't want great solo queue players. We want great teammates, and that's a big that's a big step um, because those games are kind of different. The collegiate. Uh, meta and game is very different than the uh, the competitive queue meta where you can manipulate it in some ways. Good teams are good teams because they're good teams, not because they're a collection of individually talented players. And we see it all the time where good teams beat more talented players. Um, and so get on a team, get right. on a team and, and learn to lift where you stand. Mm hmm. Exactly. And I see our uh, founder, Gerald Solomon, commenting there. What Doc means to say is join NASEF, which is 100% true. <laughs> through NASEF and through our partners at HSEL, we have a ton of opportunities for students to Gerald, play Gerald, you teams. read my mind. As usual, you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, Danielle, how about you? What advice do you have for high schoolers who are, who are wanting to play at your school? I mean, everything that Doc said, uh, and also persistence. I mean, uh sometimes i get super busy and if if you have great grades and experience and and just continue to kind of like reach out or try to bring something to my attention um that's a big thing i also think extracurriculars outside of uh, just esports are are something too and it not just like our club but just what you do for uh, your community and things to improve and as a person it just kind of shows what kind of character you have i know that's a lot to ask of a of a high school student but you know it matters right well you know what in high school you're preparing for college you're preparing for life right so i think I agree, it's a great time to start those habits of making a difference in your community and um, you know, being part of a team that's making a difference and not just thinking only about myself and how do I, what do I need? How am I gonna, how am I gonna get better for my own future? But how am I gonna help my community too? Um, Adam, anything to add to this? What kind of, what kind of things should kids be doing while they're in high school? I'm not going to add anything, but word of caution, I think, to a lot of high schoolers as they're going through the process um, of high school is is watch your digital imprint and 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 your brand on social media. I mean, you can you can burn bridges before they're even built um, with what you've put out on social media. I I was just talking to another coach uh, colleague of mine at another school who um, said. Uh, he's leaving to go to another school, but he is working through the process of doing the interviews of the school he's leaving. Um, and he saw somebody had applied and he all he knew about that one person was a bad negative tweet they put out a couple months ago. And because of that, they're not going to get an interview. So even and, and it's even probably even more important when we're looking at high schoolers and, and looking at college opportunities. So clean up that social media and keep it clean. It's just not worth it. And that's coming from me, who is pretty spicy on social media sometimes so um, let, let, yeah i'd love to add to that adam because you're 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 absolutely right the how you've communicated yourself in the past how you communicate today those are all incredibly important uh adam you, you're specifically calling on twitter but it's any social media platform that like anyone has visibility everything you put out there if it's Twitter, let's be honest, 99% of the time somebody used against you sometime in the future, somehow it will be twisted in whatever way, whether you meant it or not. So, so be very careful there. But I do also want to point in, uh, point out that some developers, some publishers are looking much more closely at in-game chat. And, and I think that might be surprising to yeah. some people. I'll, I'll give you an example. League of Legends, Riot Runs. Uh, College League of Legends. We also at NACE run League of Legends competition, but specifically to College League of Legends, they they actually do look at the player chat history of the students competing. 
to my knowledge, they're the the only publisher that does that at the collegiate level. I know, though, because we work with many publishers, that is actually look being looked at much more closer for the future. So be careful. I, I mean, we're we're not just wanting, and it's not just us publishers uh, as well. We're, we're not just trying to 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 see how you handle yourself in public. You're also being evaluated by how do you handle yourself when you feel like you're in a safe safe place. It's um, true. I, I mean, our our team at Aquinas had a student who was deemed ineligible for College League of Legends last year, and it was because of something he said six months before he even came to Aquinas in a game. Um, so th that's really important uh, to know. And also Twitch streams, you never know who's watching. Because I know Doc has mentioned it to me before, but I'll even do it with recruits. Is If I find a recruit streaming, I'll pop in and listen and, and see how they conduct themselves. Um, and if they're doing things that I wouldn't approve of, I just immediately leave and they get nixed off my recruiting list because I, I just don't, I don't want to have that in my program, um, frankly. Yeah. So. Right. Absolutely. And NASEF, we have a code of conduct and that is super important to us. And I know one of the things that that we're thinking is we know there's a lot of toxicity out there in esports. Right. But we're imagining this change happening right now from the ground up, from the younger kids coming in and the change that they're going to make as they're in high school and they're in these programs that are demonstrating to them, how do you be uplifting? How do you be a good role model? How do you learn how to handle tilt? I mentioned the UCI research earlier, and one of the big studies they did is, how are kids learning to manage their tilt in game? And it's very different when they're in a guided situation like NASEF, where they have a coach and they have a general manager who are helping them go, okay, you did just completely blow it. You're right. Now, how do you handle that? How do you respond with your teammates? and build those skills in, in high school, and then in your case, in college. And that makes for better citizens, we talked about this just a few minutes ago, better citizens in the world overall, right? Not just where you're gaming, but overall. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to have you guys bring that up. And it wasn't something I expected to cover. So I'm glad that glad that we dove into it, really important. Um, okay, we have, we have just about every time we talk to somebody who loves esports and they hear about NASEF and they hear about, oh, you guys have these clubs in high school, these teams in high school. I wish I had that opportunity. So I'm just going to ask each of you, finish this sentence. If I had something like NASEF when I was in high school, Michael, what would have been different for you? Maybe I would have been invited to the cool table. I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> My knee would would not be clicking at this point uh, in time. I, I mean, I played I played football for the most part, uh, all the way you know middle school through high school. Uh, I loved it. Still do love football. But l let me tell you, um, at a certain point, people got a lot bigger than me. Overnight, they didn't tell me. I, I didn't know I was supposed to get bigger too. Uh, but uh yeah <laughs> yeah my knee would be a little bit better at this point in time i i feel but um look i, I we all have this right uh, danielle ta spoke about this earlier none of us had the opportunity to do this in college um i, I think all of us loved games but probably unless you are a very close friend you would never know this about us right it's not something you would talk about it's not it, like why would you it never come up in conversation and, and your community felt very small um, because of that, it, it just kind of is what it is. I, I find it wonderful. It's a breath of fresh air. Um, and a sign to think of a good person that they recognize when they didn't get an opportunity instead of complaining about it, they do exactly what Danielle and many others have done. They create those opportunities for other people because they see value in it. Uh, and, and that's exactly what I think we're seeing from the good folks who are nasive. Uh, that's exactly what we see within NACE. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean, I, I wonder all the, the people I, I probably had a lot in common with uh, that I never had a connection with because we never knew about each other. We never knew what the other was passionate about because there's no opportunity to connect. Um, but absolutely, right. those connections exist today. Yeah, yeah. Adam, how about you? If you had something like NASEF when you were in high school, what would, what would have been different for you? My parents probably would have supported my passions more. Um, and taking them seriously. Uh, I was always a gamer. I still game with my high school bud buddies today. Um, and th that's the reason why I started the, the club at the high school four or five years ago, um, was to create those same opportunities for students. And um, uh, I, I think that would be the most important 
piece taking it away uh if if i was afforded that opportunity is is parents would be more bought in they're still not bought in but we're getting there we're working Um, on it yeah yeah (laughs) uh and then um the other uh piece was um I think I would have taken my passions more seriously as a student. I I always thought, I never thought gaming would give me a career. I never thought gaming would be anything past what I did when I got home from school. Um, But now, obviously, I've realized that. And and now I get to to share that knowledge with students today. And that that brings me joy because um, up until now, I've had students, I, I know one student at Aquinas that I constantly talk about, his name's Powder. He's a rocket league caster there um he tried out for the rocket league team was not good enough to play and i was like yeah i don't have a spot for you but i'd love to have you cast and he did um and now he's casting on college carballs twitch getting uh in front of thirty thousand people at a given time and this is a student that his first two years at aquinas had switched majors twice didn't know what he wanted to do and now he has found that that calling and that passion and it's because we offered esports at aquinas that that student and numerous others have have come to that realization so um and and i would have hopefully had that same opportunity if we had something like nasef back in my day but we didn't so all we could do is try to provide that for for students now right and that's that's really the heart of this question right it isn't about the do-over it's about take advantage right now like look at these leaders in front of you i mean what high school student wouldn't love to play for any one of you right and so hear what they're saying about the value of nasef and take advantage of it um danielle how about you if you had nasef and you're in high school yeah uh literally guidance and community i mean everything that they said it's i i was kind of being a female i kind of really left games under wraps because people were like, you play games. So I was going about my life. uh, uh, I was a patient advocate in an emergency room. And there were people who didn't even know that I played games religiously because I worked nights. So uh, just literally having people like me around. uh, And I, I, you know, I get around along with tons of people, but there are plenty of people who don't have that community. But this is one of those first times that I really feel accepted through and through for everything that I do. Um, and that's the cool part. So I uh, definitely having a community around me and, and to support, uh, and I would have saved a lot of money and time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's important. <laughs> How about you, doc? Well, what if? if NACIF had been around when I was in high school, we probably wouldn't have had to fight the Confederacy for the future of our union. <laughs> So uh, we would have been able to leave uh, it to die. Yeah, game. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> leave it to that. Well, you know what? I'm hearing what all of you are saying. And it, it reminds me of a student who told us once like, when their school announcements announced that the esports team had a championship match that day, like he just, you know, like, that's me. I can't believe they're talking about me and the esports team on the announcement. Like, it just makes such a difference to high schoolers. And so um, it's really cool. I just love the opportunity to be working in this and to be helping students see their vision, how they can connect their passion with where they're going to go to school, what they're going to study, what they're going to play, you know, their free time, whether they're going to play on a varsity team or in a club. You all mentioned having great clubs. So, um, you know, there are tons of opportunities for kids, and that's what we want to reinforce is that through NACEF and through, um, you know, NACE, you can see what your opportunities are in the collegiate space. And that's what we're here for is to open those up to students and hopefully give them a path to do something that they really love. So I cannot thank you guys enough, all four of you. This was so much fun as I knew it would be from who was on the panel. And um, we're for sure going to make use of this, um, as I said, when school is out and make sure that the students get to see this too. So thank you all so much for your time. Thank Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I had some supporters. You did have some supporters. I noticed that. (laughs) She's one of my team captains. So uh, I probably have a couple other in there secretly. They're they uh, make a joke out there because they called me, uh, I got called a manager on stream. So now they just haven't let it die. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. Either way, you're the boss. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All yep. right. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys. <laughs>